Welcome to J is for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Cher. Hi, Cher. We planted flowers on the side of the house. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Prairie Boy 77. Thank you for the awesome mug. The the beard of reason. Can you guys see it? I know there's a reflection. You guys can grab your merch over at Prairie Boy 77. Check out his channel. His lovely wife is here. Digger. Digger. I hope you're doing okay, Digger. We miss you so, so, so much. We do. Good morning, Tiny Ghost and Cheryl. Thank you to all the members that have joined. Um, happy girl. Welcome to the chat. It is great to see all of you guys here in chat. Um, I haven't been on in a while, so <clears throat> excuse me. I had to uh, cancel yesterday and put it off till today. So I'm happy to be here. Um, I was invited over on another panel this morning, and I'm gracious for that invite, but I had to get back to my channel because I haven't been here in a while. So, Dr. Malmo in the house. Alyssa. Alyssa, Alyssa. So today we're going to be talking about the Crumblies. So this is called Meet the Crumblies. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about who these people are. And we're going to kind of take this in stages. So we're going to start out the parents' names. And you'll see a slideshow on the screen of different things, posts that they made, um, the Scrumblies. Yeah. They are. Creepy, creepy. Hey, Nikki. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. I'm going to be back regularly. Look at, there's Nora. You live in Michigan, Beth. Yeah, I used to live right near where this happened as well. So. You see uh, the pictures of Ethan and his parents, uh, just very bizarre. But um, we're going to start out by, by the little story about their neighbor, okay? So James and Jennifer Crumley are Ethan's parents. Now, there is a neighbor named Kayla Lemieux, and she lives near Ethan and his parents. And she said that when Ethan was eight or nine years old, they would leave him alone while they went out bar hopping. Lemieux is 28 years old, and she told the New York Post, or I'm sorry, she told the Detroit Free Press, when they were gone, he would come knock on our door. They didn't leave him with a phone. So Lemieux said she contacted CPS, but doesn't know if they took action, noting that the alleged neglect continued. And then Kayla goes on to say, it was really when I finally started to say more because I was just like, even after calling CPS, they were still doing it. And even me saying something to them, they were still like, oh, he's fine. Famous last words. So uh, uh, specifically, I guess they went on a bar crawl and left Ethan, age eight or nine, home alone. So we also have heard from Ethan's brother. Ethan has an older brother. 
And let's see. We got a lot of dirt on these people. It's it's not good. It's not good. None of this is good that comes out of out of these people. Um so his older brother is 18 years old and he says that Ethan was a happy kid. He got good grades. He was into Minecraft and wasn't bullied as a child. So uh, Ethan's brother's name is Eli Crumbly. And he has moved away. So he was um, living there. And he moved away. Now, mind you, Ethan is 15. Eli is 18. They have the same father, but they have different mothers. So if you do the math, when Eli was three... Ethan was born to Jennifer Crumbly. And the two boys were growing up in Florida, but then they both moved to Michigan with their dad and Jennifer, their stepmother. Now, Eli didn't get specific with the Daily Mail, but he did hint at some issues with his stepmother that prompted him to swiftly move back to Florida to live with his biological mother last March. So just last year. Eli was like, peace out. But we don't know why. I'm sure we'll find out why, but we don't know why right now. So Ethan remained in his parents' house in Oxford, which is less than two miles from where the shooting took place at the high school. And four students died that day. So uh, another, okay, so let's go on with Eli. Eli Crumbly says he, can't un- he cannot understand how his own sibling could suddenly snap, open fire, and kill his classmates. He says the Ethan I knew was just a smart boy who just seemed like an average kid. There was nothing that ever stood out to me. He'd never get suspended from school or detention. He didn't suffer depression or anything like that. He woke up happy, went to school, came home, and played games. So he says he was a happy and average kid. I'm not sure I, I buy that, but... Because all the kids at school say he was... He was a little weird, right? Um, so Eli says that most of the reason that he did move back to Florida was because of issues between his stepmother and himself. It wasn't as great as it could be, and moving back to Florida was the best option for me. And that's where he left it. So his brother says he was never bullied. The school is saying that he was bullied. And that is his motive for this shooting. But the police have not confirmed that motive. But they are charging Ethan as an adult. And uh, his brother hadn't spoke with him for two months or his dad. But he did reach out to his dad after hearing of the mass shooting. And Eli said, I was worried. I wanted to see if Ethan was okay because I knew he went there. Now, Eli also attended the school for one year. Um, He says, and that's when I was receiving information otherwise. Unable to reach his dad, Eli called a former employer who told him that his old house in Oxford was surrounded by FBI agents. He then learned that his own father bought the gun that Ethan used. Eli said, when I was living there, nothing seemed off. We just walked to the bus stop in the morning, go to school, come home, maybe play some football outside or basketball. We just chill. We didn't do much. But didn't get along with the stepmother. Which brings me... Um, oh, wait, there's more from Eli. He did not know that Ethan had a gun till after it happened. He said, it's hard to believe. I still can't believe it. 
And as far as I knew, Ethan was always good. He was quiet, kept to himself, kept his circle of friends small. He was a clean kid, didn't smoke or do drugs, nothing. He got good grades and he wanted to be an archaeologist. Ethan was on the bowling and soccer teams in middle school, but didn't play team sports in high school. He said his brother's biggest hobby was video games, which he'd play at night. His favorite was Minecraft. Asked whether he knew of any other problems that Ethan was experiencing, Eli noted that they had an aunt who died a couple months ago and that Ethan recently also lost his pet dog, Tank. Eli says, I really don't know what his reasoning was behind this. He was surprised to hear that bullying may have been a factor. I would like to talk to him, he said, but I don't think that's something that's going to happen for a while. Police said that there is no record of the teenager being bullied, as other students have claimed, and prosecutors revealed at his arraignment that he had detailed in a journal found in his backpack how he wanted to shoot the students at the school. He posted on Instagram four days before the attack to show off his father's new gun, pretending it was his. Just got my new beauty today. Sig Sauer, Sauer 9 millimeter. Is it sour or so? I don't know. Sour, six hour, nine millimeter. Ask any questions. I will answer. And those posts have been deleted. So that takes us to the evil stepmother. Jennifer Crumbly. Yes, the boys have the same mother. No, different mothers, same dad. Right? Yeah. Different mothers, same dad. So Eli has a different mom. So Eli moved back to Florida to live with his biological mother, and Ethan stayed with his biological mother and father up in Michigan. Now, I mean, really the debate here starts with, should these parents be held responsible for what their son did in that school? So let's talk a little bit more about Mrs. Crumbly, Mrs. Jennifer Crumbly. She is the marketing director for, it looks like some kind of a property management company, um, possibly like apartments from what I could see. Um, I think that, you know, that'll be a good discussion. We can do a call in. And kind of have everybody call in and talk about what your thoughts are on the parents being charged. And like another episode is going to be all about the school because there is more than one lawsuit. And I want to read those through with you because there's more details in those. I don't think she's actually a realtor. She's the marketing manager for a property management and the, the property management company owns a bunch of apartments. Hey, Frankie Hopkins, I've missed you as well. So let's keep going. Um, she was having an affair, supposedly, while ignoring Ethan's troubling behavior. So it came out that his mother was having an affair with another man while all of this was, was happening with Ethan. She had... Hmm, it looks like she had explicit videos on her phone. So they're saying there was at least one intimate affair that involved Jennifer Crumbly. Now... James Crumbly's ex had a lot to say about Jennifer and James. She said that Ethan's dad is a piece of shit who abandoned her family and Jennifer is a monster. Now, her name is Michelle Cobb. I'm going to show you her picture here. Let me share my screen with you guys. Because this is James's 
ex. He says ex-girlfriend, so I'm assuming he never married her. But he, he married uh, old, old Jennifer, Jennifer Lynn Crum, Crumbly. The Crumblies. All right. This would be the X right here. Okay. She says pretty much Jennifer Crumbly is the devil. She hates her. Piece of shit. She says James is a piece of shit. She had a lot to say. So let's let's hear what she has to say, and then we can weed through what we believe and what we don't believe. Thank you, Jane, for your generous super chat. That is very sweet. So Michelle Cobb shares a son with James. And here we have Mr. James, piece of shit, crumbly, according to his ex. Oh, boy, these people. Okay. So he left behind a daughter as well. Oh, man. So not only did James leave Eli, well, Eli came up to Michigan and then was like, I'm peacing out because Jennifer is a psycho, right? So he left and went back to Florida. But he also has a daughter, Vince, day to day. My favorite attorney attracts water. I love ya. Okay. Um, so he left behind a daughter. So she says James Crumbly and his wife, Jennifer, allegedly looked for ways to criticize Cobb because they hated that he had to pay child support for his son, Eli. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so this is Eli's mom, but she's saying that he also had a daughter that with another woman. I cried the moment he turned 18 because I thought all this hell is over as far as dealing with my son's father, she said. Cobb blames Jennifer Crumbly for making it difficult for Eli to get closer to his father and half-brother Ethan, calling her a monster. She could do no wrong, and she was right about everything. I mean, this is exactly the kind of attitude she has. Like, she literally thought she was better than everyone. Huh. Did she now? Did she? Jennifer Crumbly thought she was better than everyone. Imagine that. Shocker of the year. I mean, this lady seems like a real bitch. Um, one of those, you know, everybody gets a trophy type mothers. Thank you, Dana D. I haven't been on Twitter in a bit. I'll have to check those messages. Thank you, Dana. Okay, so the Crumblies, da 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 da. Okay, so let's see here. Cobb said she wouldn't be surprised if Ethan's parents bought the semi automatic handgun as a gift for him. They pretty much gave him whatever he wanted, she said. Why would you let a 15 year old have access, especially knowing that just a few days prior he was having problems at school? And then she goes on to say, I hope they get the maximum, honestly, all of them. They deserve it. They need to be held accountable for what their child did. They need to have a reality check. And there is the beautiful Jennifer Crumbly at her best. I wonder what her lover thinks of her now. And I wonder if he'll ever be outed. And there is Ethan, who looks very disturbed. Okay, let's watch the video of... James's ex. And let's see what she had to say about the piece of shit and his wife. 
There are three simple changes I tell all of my arthritis patients to make. Number one, you have to start drinking more. He's a piece of shit. He really is. The whole time of my son growing, my son is 18 years old now. Jennifer was a monster. She could do no wrong, and she was right about everything. There are three simple changes I tell all of my arthritis patients to make. Number one. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, she does have a reason, you know, she is an ex, but I mean, uh, I don't think she's exaggerating, to be honest. I mean, considering all that we've learned about these people, um, let me come to chat and see what you guys are thinking thus far. Um, there you go on the screen. We have, uh, Jeffrey Figer who is representing one of the families in this case in a civil suit against Oxford Community Schools. We're going to be reading that through um, tomorrow. We're going to do this tomorrow morning again. Um, and here you see James Crumbly's um, Facebook and Twitters. That's where they bought the gun. All these photos... Um, are associated with the case and the posts that they made on social media and stuff like that. Ethan's pictures he drew in school. Hello, checking convictions. Hello, Belinda. Yeah, Digger, I thought so. Jennifer looks quite different from her driver's license photo, doesn't she? There's a lot of details in those civil suits that we did not hear from the prosecutor, so it's very interesting. Um, I know the gun was bought for him because there's the posts of his mother and him um, at the shooting range. So this is a video of Ethan Crumley collapsing and hitting his head. And this is in 2020, and this is compliments of CDT. If you guys are not subscribed to CDT, this is her video here. So I want to thank her for this 24-second footage that she found. But this, he must have been working somewhere. I don't, a diner, I guess. I don't know what diner. Somewhere in, maybe I'll recognize it if I look. All right, here we go. Let's watch Ethan fall and hit his head. Like, what's wrong with this kid? Like, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa. You all right? Wait, let's watch that again. Dude, he, like, biffed his head, like, hard. He was working in Oxford with his brother that day? What the hell made him fall, though? I mean, like, he fell hard. Let's watch it again. I never seen anybody fall down because they smoked weed. Of course, I got to play it in slow-mo now. Whoa, dude. Well, that's not his brother coming to his rescue i mean is he drinking but well, what's going on here i mean what the fuck? we haven't heard that this kid has any like physical health issues That lady's like, uh, yeah, that lady's like, uh, why'd that kid just fall? Like, what's going on? Yeah, I don't think that, uh, 
he looked like he slipped. It looked like he, like, got lightheaded or something. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so there's that clip. We're just, we're going to look at everything that, that I've got here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, most 15-year-olds, if they if they don't have any um, health issues, you wouldn't think they would biff out like that. Jean Clay, I am so happy that you're here. Um, so there's that little clip. Um, we're not sure. Maybe We haven't heard anything about medical, but there could be a medical issue that maybe we just don't know about that we haven't heard of, right? We don't know. We don't know everything just yet. So, um, man, there's a lot that go that's going on with this school too. They just had another breach, um, where a kid was able to walk in the school. But wasn't checked. Nothing. So the Oxford, um, the Oxford. Superintendent, oh my God, made an announcement and he was like, we got to figure something out. We've got to, you know, figure out how we're going to, you know, remedy this situation. And it's like, you hadn't already, Oxford? So let's talk a little bit about Ethan and his behavior at school. Prior to the shooting. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger. But right. As I'm saying how they're like, how many times they have to screw up. Scott, I'm going to email you today. And we are going to talk about um, Summer's birthday. So you guys, just really quick before we continue. I want to let you guys know that on February the 4th, which we all know is Summer Wells 6th birthday that we are doing something special here at J is for Justice. So what we're doing is we're calling it Purple Power for summer. And I'm asking everyone to light a candle. It doesn't have to be purple, but it can be. Um, I've had a few people send me porch lights. Some got lanterns. Um, so we are going to um, share those photos and those videos on the J is for Justice Facebook page. It is pinned at the top. And then I'm going to put all those together and I'm going to make a video to honor Summer Wells on her sixth birthday. Um, Scott Skulls is an artist and he is in chat right now. And we are going to go live and we're going to go live for six hours on the fourth for Summer's six years. So six hours on the 4th, and Scott Skulls is going to paint us live a portrait of Summer. So be sure to go to J is for Justice Facebook page, like it, and look for the pinned post at the top of the page and leave your picture, your comment, your prayer, your video. Cat and candy boobs on that Facebook page. And we're going to put that video together. Um, and then also we're going to have Scott, which it's going to be so neat to watch him paint live. So he's going to put the camera on his. Um, hey, Tiffany, share. He is going to put the camera on his. Uh, palette, whatever you call it, the. Six hours. How long, Scott, do you think that it will take? Yeah, Cher's got the purple hair for summer. How long do you think that a portrait like that would take? I just want to know, like, what to plan on. Just off the top of your head. Maybe we should do a practice one, a practice run. Oh, bird nerd, that's nice. My daughter made a purple candle when she was six. We'll get that out. Hey, KK.
So I hope that everybody will contribute in some way. If you don't have a light that you're going to light, you can do it early. Um, you can do it on the day of. You can do it whenever you want. But please, um, leave a comment or leave a prayer or a hopeful message. Uh, why you follow this case? You know, what, what summer has, you know, brought to your life. I mean, we've all followed this case and I mean, summer has changed us in one way or another. And I'd love to hear how summer has changed you, if at all. So um, I look forward to that. Scott, um, you don't have to be on the whole six hours. I'm going to stream for six hours, but you don't have to be on the whole six hours, but we'll talk about that. It's totally up to you. We'll talk about that more in depth offline, but I am really, really looking forward to it. Scott Skulls is from the Mitten as well. And he has done some art up in the Port Huron area. And he is a very talented artist. So I am happy to have him in my chat and also to showcase him on my channel. So thanks again, Scott Skulls. All right, so back to the Crumblies. So before the shooting, the police have said that there was no indication that Ethan had any disciplinary issues other than having, having met with school officials the day prior and again on the day of the shooting to discuss his behavior. The first meeting occurred after a teacher spotted Ethan using his phone to search for ammunition and reported him. Now, what I learned from the lawsuit that was fired by, fired, filed later by Jeffrey Figer's group was that not only was he Googling ammunition, but he also had his backpack in the classroom, which was not allowed. Hello, April Dawn, and <clears throat> thank you for being a member for 18 months. Woo! Okay. Yeah, Scott Skulls has the skills. All right, so. Okay, so during the discussion about Ethan using his phone to search ammunition, Ethan told the school that he and his mother had recently been to a shooting range and that shooting sports are a family hobby. Do you guys know what the diner is? Because I'm really familiar with that area. Was it Red Naps by chance? Um, okay, so school officials did leave a voicemail and an email for Jennifer, the mother. She did not respond, but she later later texted Ethan saying, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. Nobody said yikes, he hasn't come home, Ashley. I mean, talk about irresponsible at the very least, right? He didn't skip school. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. So the second meeting occurred after another teacher found a violent drawing on Crumbly's desk of a semi-automatic handgun pointing at the words, the thoughts won't stop. Help me. And then in another section of the note was a drawing of a bullet with the following words above the bullet that said blood everywhere. Between the drawing of the gun and the bullet is a drawing of a person who appears to have been shot twice and bleeding. Below that figure is a drawing of a laughing emoji. Further down the drawing are the words, my life is useless. And to the right of that are the words, the world is dead. Knowing that Ethan Crumbly was writing these things in school, do you think that he was looking for help? Like that was a, 
that was a cry out for help? Or do you think he was just being um you know, evil, violent? Put a one in chat. If you think that Ethan might have been looking for someone to see this and looking for help or attention, put a two if you think this kid is just off his rocker. Because I think there might be a little bit of both going on with the lack of guidance, lack of caring from his mother. Yeah. He knew he wasn't feeling right. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. This is a lesson, I think, too. There's so many things going on here. Here, let's pause that. Hold on. How do I pause it? I don't know if I can. Ding it. The voices won't stop. Yes. So, mind you, the school resource officer was never notified of any of this behavior. Never notified that he was Googling ammunition. Never notified that he had drew, drawn this scary depiction of what he was going to do. They never involved him. The counselors never involved him. And I found out in, also, in the um, civil suit... that the school was actually hiding their social media after this happened. The counselors linked in. One of the counselors who's being sued or named in this lawsuit hid his LinkedIn as well. So... He was 15, Blonde Fox. 15 and in high school. So, all right. Hang on. I'm just trying to add this thing to my stream. Let's see if it works. Okay. Um. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to the fact that they, they sent him back to class. Okay. So now the teacher took a photo of the drawing, which was on a math worksheet, and reported it. Ethan was taking, taken. It's in the lawsuit, Dr. Momo. They, the school, when they went, people were going to the website for the school, and it was all broken links. And one of the counselors, a male, actually deleted his social media the next day. I think they knew that they were in trouble. They knew right away they were in trouble. So the teacher took a photo and reported it. He was taken to the guidance counselor's office where the school staff called Crumbly's parents. While waiting for them an hour and a half, the school counselors said they did not observe any behavior from Crumbly that he indicated that indicated he may har harm others. And this is per the superintendent of Oxford Community Schools. The Crumbly's parents were shown the drawing when they arrived at the meeting. And Ethan at this time had scribbled over in an attempt to conceal what it said. They were instructed to seek counseling for their son within 48 hours or the school said they would call Child Protective Services. They, quote, resisted the idea of Crumbly leaving the school at the time and did not inform school officials that they had recently purchased a gun for him. He was returned to class because he had no prior disciplinary issues. 
Crumbly had the weapon he used somewhere on the school grounds at the time of that meeting. And I think we find out later that it was in his backpack. After the second meeting, Crumbly allegedly committed the shooting at 12.50 p.m. So Jennifer Crumbly at 1.22, seven minutes after the first news report came out of a shooting at the school, Jennifer texted Ethan and said, Ethan, don't do it. At 1.37, James Crumbly called 911 to report the handgun is missing. And he also said in that 911 call that Ethan could be the gunman at Oxford High. So the superintendent says that at the time no discipline was warranted and Sheriff Bouchard of the Oakland County Sheriff's Department said concerns about Crumley's behavior were not shared with his office. Hey, G. Maria. How are you? Wow. Okay. So all of this happens. Okay. We've got them at the gun range. They're buying this kid a gun because he wanted it. They gave this kid whatever he wanted to keep him out of their hair. Mom was having an affair, going to the bar, whatnot. I don't know what dad was doing. But they gave him what he wanted to keep him out of their hair. So after announcing the charges against Ethan, the prosecutor there in Oakland County, Karen McDonald, told the reporters that were asking questions that day that she was also considering criminal charges against Jennifer and James. She said that responsible gun ownership was crucial to stop tragedies, and those who are not responsible should be held accountable. And I agree with that. I agree with that. And I feel like they're going to make an example out of these two, especially with their attitude. We're going to get into also their, their hearings and their behavior In the hearing, specifically Jennifer's. Specifically Jennifer's. So both of them were supposed to show up with their attorneys to face these charges, but failed to. They didn't show up which put the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, and the Oakland County Fugitive Apprehension Team out to search. So really, your son kills four students at his school with a gun that you bought him. And you go and you run. They ran with something like 15 debit cards, credit cards in their pocket, several phones. They ditched a car. They backed their car in down in Detroit where they hid out. I mean, bye, Donna Fox. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping in. Disturbing, disturbing, disturbing. So, uh, let's see. So, the attorneys then in, then in turn said that they didn't flee, but they were running for their own safety. This is what was said in court. And we're going to watch those hearings. I think maybe they were prepaid because they took like four grand out of the ATM, which I've never heard of anyone being able to take four grand from an ATM, but I don't know how they were able to do that unless they maybe they did it in several stops. I'm not sure. But you see the wanted posters put up by the U.S. Marshals. 
They actually made flyers for these two POSs. So someone who ran a business, an Oakland County resident, ran a business inside this warehouse in Detroit, which I'm pretty sure we know who that is. He's an artist. He said that he was not aware that the couple was wanted by authorities at the time that he allowed him them to stay. And he declined to elaborate on the nature of his association with the couple. The authorities did question this man, and they said he's being cooperative, and they did search his Troy, Michigan home and seize several digital devices. So who knows? If he lied, you might see more charges. Um, at 11.05 p.m. on December the 3rd, Police received a tip from a business owner who found the Crumbly's vehicle in his parking lot in Detroit. And that's about 40 miles from Oxford. The man also said he saw Jennifer, who fled upon being spotted. Police responded to the scene about 20 minutes later and established a perimeter in the area. The only time that these two came out was when James moved the car and backed it in and to smoke. They did request from their friend, the artist, hello, Marie Arnold. They requested vodka and orange juice and bedding. And he provided it. So the police surrounded this warehouse and around 2 a.m., so they were out there for about three hours. They took them into custody. So after they went in, Right, the door was locked. So they bust in. These people still were hiding behind a mattress in this warehouse. So the person actually who had reported them helped them enter the building. And then they were hiding behind a mattress. So there was no indication that they planned to surrender to authorities at all. And then their attorney goes on to say that they didn't flee but left town for their own safety. They were supposed to show up for their 4 o'clock arraignment and remained at large. The attorneys had also said that they hadn't talked with the parents after attempting to reach them by phone and text. CNN reported that Jennifer and James had withdrawn four grand from an ATM in Rochester Hills on December 3rd and that they had turned off their cell phones. So Jennifer and James were finally arraigned on the morning of December 4th where they pleaded not guilty to the charges and a bail of 500000 each was set for them. And they're in the same jail as their son. Now, their son has a public defender, but they bought a female dream team to represent them. So all three of them were put in isolation and were being monitored under suicide watch. And they are not allowed to interact for an indefinite amount of time. However, when we watch these hearings, you'll see that Jennifer is sign languaging her husband. They're mouthing, I love you. She's mouthing, are you okay? I mean, the audacity of these people doesn't stop. Good morning, dad set. Good to see your beautiful face. So during the Crumbly's probable cause conference on December the 14th, a judge postponed their prelim until February 8th. So they did have a bond hearing on the 7th, and the bond was not changed. The judge said, nope, not lowering it. 
So that gets us up to kind of the point where we're going to pick up. We're going to get deeper into this as we go through the court hearings. We listen to the prosecutor talk about the details of the case. Um, she's had to really bring out the big guns a couple times and give a lot of information in order to keep them behind bars. So they're charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. So then we are going to tomorrow pick this up. I'm going to make each episode about an hour. And tomorrow we're going to pick this up and we're going to go into the hearings. And that's where we're going to dive deeper into what Ethan did, um, what it means, how we can learn from that, what we can learn from this. You know, it always boils back down to mental illness. And just because, you know, these people weren't living in squalor or whatnot, the system still failed because there's four kids dead. And when you hear these stories in these civil suits, you're, you're just going to, you're going to feel so sad because this could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. So let me come back to chat and we'll, we'll talk about this for a few minutes and then we will reconvene with Crumbly's. We will conclude the meet the Crumbly's crime B. Thank you for being here. They took their son's money. And they have, yes, I said they have private attorneys. Hi, Fly. Hi. So good to see you. The parents did. Yes, the parents, but also the, the system did as well. I mean, a school has a responsibility, Dr. Melmo, um, to maintain a safe environment for the other students. So had my kid been going there, I would be very upset that they didn't do that. Because all of those children were put at risk because of the school. But yes, ultimately, the parents are first and foremost responsible for their kids. I respect you. So, um, let's see what else. I live in Oxford. Jamie Shelton. I live in Oxford. Down the street from the school, I saw the authorities fly by to go there. I saw the parents crying, looking for their kids at Meyer, and students crying, running. It's so sad. It's surreal. You know, we all watched Columbine unfold. But, you know, being that I'm from Michigan, and I work, I mean, I worked in Oxford. I live right there. You know, to see that happen close to home, it puts it in a whole nother light. But also the fact that these parents knew so much and were so involved with what happened, right? They bought this kid a gun. Now you'll hear later from the prosecutor too, that also, um, he had Nazi, he was drawing Nazi symbols. You know, this was out in the open where the parents could see it. There would be a grocery list on one side, Nazi symbols on the other. That's it. Welcome, member for six months. Welcome to the jungle. Roberta. Yes, Karen McDonald, the prosecutor is awesome. She's doing an amazing job. I have no doubt that she is going to try to push and get them the maximum that she can. Because you know what? People need to be responsible for their handguns. That's part of owning a handgun is being responsible. And I agree, Scott Skulls. But when you have trained counselors, you would think they would be able to see the signs of mental illness. This kid didn't need, in my opinion, I'm no doctor, but I don't feel like this kid needed two days to get into counseling. I think he needed immediate attention. Because we're going to talk about the bird head that he brought to school and left in the bathroom. And the other things that he's done. 
They're all in the civil. They're all in the civil suit. Um, but we're going to go over that tomorrow. So you guys come back here. We're going to go over Figer and all of the allegations on Ethan Crumbly. And since I've missed you guys so much, I might just come back in a little bit and talk a little bit more about what we're going to do for Summer's birthday. Um, I've got other updates I want to give you guys too. So maybe I'll come back later. I will see you guys for sure tomorrow morning. I'm going to put the event up. And if you guys could go and hit that reminder and join me on this journey. And then we will follow on the 8th as well, their hearing. I've missed you too, Tiffany Sharon, Bonnie, and Tiny Ghost. Come back. I want to talk. All right, Scott, I will. I'm going to get some stuff done, and then I will be back with you guys later. Thank you for tuning in. Um, oh, man. Crazy, crazy trains. Yep, torturing animals. There's a lot that's going to come out, you guys, and I'm sure there's more. So you guys take care. I will see you guys later for sure tomorrow on part two of Meet the Crumblies. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I don't give a damn. I don't really care about you and your problems. I don't give a damn. You talk way too much. I have heard enough about you and